Jerry Jones. He's no beta. He's no Biden. He's on beta blockers, but he's no beta. Yeah. So Stephen A. Smith, he went on and, and first take and said, hey, uh, Jerry maybe needs to maybe <laughs> pipe down a little bit. Here's, here's Stephen A. I say this because I'm not joking when I say this. Um, I, I'm getting very, very worried about Jerry Jones because the only thing that's worse than the team's play is his press conferences or whatever you want to call it when he's in front of the reporters where he says one thing after another after another. I find myself thinking about, you know, Joe Biden w- before he backed out of, uh, of running for re-election. And he's only, listen, he's only one month. I think Jerry was one month older than, than, than uh, uh, President Joe Biden, for crying out loud. I remember when I was on the airwaves, literally, guys, nine, ten months ago, and I was like, yo, he, 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 can't, he can't be the nominee. You ain't going to make it to the Democratic National Convention. Y'all got to change. Y'all got to do something to change. And I'm looking at Jerry, and I find myself asking, where the hell is Stephen Jones? Where the hell are his family members? Who, who is, I, I know he's the owner and the president and the GM, and I get all that. But somebody in your inner circle has to be able to stop you from just adding just fuel to the fire because it is so bad right now. It's bad at Big D, but Jerry Jones is far from where President Biden is. He proves it with his answer. He went on 105.3 The Fan and said this. I believe we have that. Yes. Stephen A. is a fraud in positive sense, and I'm smiling. We're friends, and I'm having huge support and huge input and help from everyone he mentioned in that call about stepping in. But I would say if he had asked me that question relative to the issue of the criticism that Biden had about his ability to function, I wish he would follow me around every day and he would see that I'm the busiest I've ever been in my life. He continues on 105.3. He says, I'm not concerned about the ability to do the work, do the job. I just made a quick 14-hour trip back and forth to New York yesterday for a league meeting. But my point is that Stephen A. and I'd love to have him just sit beside us for a day and make the rounds and have him listen to me field calls and do the kinds of things that we do. He wouldn't be worried about me there, but I do appreciate his concern. And by the way, it's, it's genuine. That from Double J. It's a good response. Jerry Jones. I hope he takes him up on it. Stephen A. Smith. Hey, I'm going to take a day off my he show. He wears the ESPN cowboy hat and goes in. And just go job shadow uh, Jerry Jones, and he can report back on his show the state and how well he functions throughout the course of a day because Jerry Jones is very confident in that answer that he's just fine. Now, the on-field product would say otherwise, right. but – they were 12-5 and five the last three years, and the bottom has fallen out this year. Is that all Jerry Jones' fault? I, I don't know. But, Hutton, to your point, I don't watch Jerry Jones and think Joe Biden in the end. We got Joe Biden today calling the Boston Celtics the Chicago Bulls, and uh, he played it off well and, and joked about it, but there, it's not near the same no. feelings I get watching Jerry Jones in, in any interview. Is this in reference to the sunlight thing and the blinding nature of not putting the curtain up? Well, this is, a, this is everything. Talking about? I mean, every, that's part of it. I mean, on top of that, the next game that they have, after mentioning the sun and the moon, he wants to open up the, the stadium for the first time in, what, two years and show off the, the, the moonlight on Jerry's world. You know, like, I, I, I don't disagree with Stephen A. With, with, from this, it's, a lot of what he's doing is very just dumb, <laughs> you know, with yeah. not – allowing your top paid wide receiver to be able to see the football thrown at him. But I mean, he's, he's not stupid from the angle of, uh, well, he doesn't know that there are curtains available in the stadium. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's still Jerry. And I, by the way, I don't want to, I don't want to criticize any owner right now. And he's the one who will actually speak on a weekly basis. And it's really twice a week. He does it after every game. And then he goes on one Oh five, three weekly. Even though he says you can, you know, take their jobs and hire whoever he wants to ask the questions. Point being, I, he's still got the comebacks in the. I just it, the to me, it's very it's underhanded of Stephen A. Smith to to try to say or infer that he is in some way experiencing dementia or in decline the way Joe Biden clearly was and is. I think that we're talking about a lot of different things here. Is he a tyrant? Well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, how many NFL owners could we say that about? That's not a reason they're well, they're going to give up their team, or you know, there's there's a lot of tyrants and I mean, that are billionaires that own NFL teams. Jerry Jones is no different. And we could say this, but this is just on a serious note. Any person in their on their way to their mid 80s, I could anyone could say like, oh, he's on his way to losing his mind. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh, again, uh, well, th this just, is... Well, just, I mean, what are we talking about? More temperamental than usual? The, the, no. the point I'm making is he's, he's comparing him to Joe Biden. That's a mental faculty issue. I don't see that at all with Jerry Jones. Has he made bad decisions to put the Cowboys up against the eight ball? Yes. Right. But he's done that for the last 30 years off and on. He's made some and good decisions too, but he's made some bad decisions. <sighs> if we're talking about irritability with the whole curtain thing, okay, we can talk about that so at his mess, age. Yeah. Maybe he's more irritable. But I just think it's a little bit irresponsible to act like he's well, declining mentally. I don't, I don't see his faculties changing at all. No, well, Maybe it's right. just his temperament. Right. And the whole thing about the family, I, I understand it's like, because he's compared it to Biden where that Jill Biden allowed her husband to go out there that night. Uh, if you see Jerry Jones on camera, he's got like 30 family members. He's got this horde that walks down through the, uh, the, the tunnel with him. Like yeah. it takes 17 golf carts to get the whole family there. Yeah. You know, like they're, they're always around in that suite. I would love to be in the suite. His, I just think his give, give a F meter is way down. That's the thing. It, I just he don't think he cares as much anymore. I think he cares. He care, no, he cares, but I'm saying he doesn't it's care not the, about his response publicly to things as much. Yeah, yeah it's not the, uh, the, the energy level. You know, the, it doesn't have that, the, the, the bite to it that it once did. You know, like he's oh, had a I lot of patience Biden too. When he was talking about knowing where the sun was going to be for a year. I thought yeah, that was he, pretty good. But he'd been asked about that before. And he was, you know, he's irritated. But I'm thinking like, this is CeeDee Lamb that's bringing this up. This isn't the reporter or yeah. the, the Sunbelt basketball tournament that wants the curtains closed. Let's, let's tear down the whole stadium and build a new one, as he said to the reporter. Yeah, let's open the roof randomly <laughs> right after a big windstorm. Yeah. You know, again, peculiar, but he's still Jerry. We love Jerry. Jerry's a big. We're a big fan on this show of Jerry Jones. And again, I, I am, was very, I'm a big was fan of an owner nice who will actually our, speak. Was very nice to us in our show when we interviewed him one time. Had a lot of great things to say. And there's a lot of uh, NFL owners we don't hear from. A ton of them. I, I mean, just if, their vote. If we're gonna be, here's my final point on all this. Yep. If we're going to be worried about an NFL owner and their state of mind, let's concern ourselves with David Tepper. And not well, the one, Jerry the, Jones. Well, but ESPN is doing this for the Cowboys. We know that. We right. know that. But I'm saying if you're a fan of a team, that I can give you some other teams that I, I'm really concerned about this owner and their temperament or their attitude or Jeff, their decision-making. It's not Jerry Jones. How about uh, the owner for the New York Giants, John Mara, allowing Daniel Jones. He, they, they released Daniel Jones. It was uh, Jones's request today to be released. The Giants grant that request. So he's now headed uh, with, without a team through waivers and then not with that contract. He's not getting picked up. He'll be a free agent. Giants moving on. And they move on a day after he's a practice squad safety. And he gets to the podium and reads a, a statement to the Giants fan base, Jeff. What'd you what, we don't see this often. But when we do see it, it's for legends. Yeah, I don't... I, look, Daniel Jones, uh, Danny Dimes seems like a nice dude, right? He's not, you know, done yeah, nice anything guy. publicly or anything to deserve what I'm about to say. But I, I don't give a shit about his statement. What yeah. has he done to deserve a farewell statement to Giants fans other than sign a contract for four years, $160 million, and not earn a, a percentage of that with on-field play? He's won one playoff game in six years as the Giants quarterback. This is not some destitute NFL franchise. It's the New York freaking Giants. They won two Super Bowls with Eli Manning at quarterback. They've been very successful. They are, in some cases, the model of stability as an organization. So I'm not going to dance on the guy's grave when he sucks and gets benched, but I'm also not going to throw him a ticker tape parade and allow him to go up and give his farewell address in a written statement in a press briefing before being cut and costing the organization this much money for poor play on the field. I just, we're, we're overly forgiving at times of when players fail this badly. I don't think you celebrate someone else's misfortune. I also don't feel the sense that I need to celebrate him if I'm a Giants fan right now. They, the only way he earned this is his 208 sacks that he took behind the Giants' offensive line, which was putrid at times throughout his career. That's the only way. 
I, and I, I will say this. I, I just, he handled it the right way by commending certain things when, I mean, they're, it's not like they made a lot of great picks around him. They let Saquon Barkley walk to sign him. And without Barkley, they didn't have an offense. But, I mean, he's going to go now and, you know, have the chance to be a, a backup to someone that's battling for a training camp spot. I just, look. It's a one-year deal. He needs to be a Sam Darnold. The obligation of an organization is, for you as the individual part of the team, is that they pay you your worth. And in this case, I would argue the Giants way overpaid for the worth of what they got out yeah. of Daniel Jones. Oh, way yeah. overpaid. I agree. He is more than compensated for everything. They don't owe you great pick after great pick. They would love to make great picks, too. They didn't. They screwed it up. Their offensive line is atrocious. They tried to do different things, and it, it just didn't work for, for him. So I don't think he has anything to feel bad about towards the Giants, considering how much money they paid the guy. In all oh, I don't those. think he's crying about it. So, But I, I he also I, like... I'm a little bit more cutthroat, and then I would say, you stay and help the new quarterback. Like, you're still on this team. Like, unless it just gives me a big benefit to cut him now. Like, I think they they're kind of giving him what he wants. Well, they, they told him he wasn't even needed. They didn't want him around. They were having him, you know, do walkthroughs. At the, they didn't want him to get hurt. And they came to some, I'm sure, some agreement where he's going to be cut. And, you know, financially, they shake hands and leave. But they were having him walk, walk through uh, as a safety. And they, they told uh, Drew Locke, yeah, you're the, you're the backup. You're the second string guy. I was informed, I think is what Drew Locke said. He was pissed off that he wasn't the starter. Drew Locke. Yeah, it's, it's just a big eye roll for me. Um, when I when I see the big farewell from uh, and uh, again I don't I don't think he's handled anything poorly. No, he's been fine. I I just think the propensity for people in media to cover something and have to feel like you have to be well, it was odd. You have to be so reverential to Daniel Jones. But it was also very... at the end of his time with the Giants. I'm thinking, if I'm a Giants fan, I'm not throwing some party for the guy. Well, and it was almost uh, the way it, it was very strange because he went, he goes to the podium and he goes he pulls out the written statement let me read this so i get this right but it was very vanilla yeah you know it's like it's your standard uh you know chat gbt farewell notice so to speak is he gonna be the quarterback for the titans next year uh, i hope not one year stop gap yeah no nah, I, I do that you're two more years behind i would say they can fully embrace the running quarterback oh. there they've, they've got one now who wants to run too much and too crazy and then they'll uh, have another one Maybe the Browns are fully embracing Jameis Winston. Eating W's. How about the snow last night? It was beautiful. The snow game with Jameis Winston. It was, it was a gorgeous thing. And I happened to turn it over at one point right when his uh, communication device, yeah. the battery for it got knocked off. And the slow-mo of him being upended in the snow and then falling down, the thing popping out, it was art. It Look was, at this photo. And, of course, he – it was This so is awesome. football. Well, and how fast that – the snow hit the field, you know, because it was like five minutes earlier, you wouldn't be able to tell it was snowing. And then when it hit, it hit. And one side of the field had more snow than the other. I saw that too. So yeah. I'm thinking because where they're located on the water, and I yeah. guess the way the wind was blowing, yes. it had kind of shifted everything to that side of the field. But one side was almost okay for a big part of the game, and the other side was completely covered. Well, how about, how about Jameis giving us more wonderful viral clips pregame? It's Thursday Night Football, and he wanted everyone to know about it. I love this. We're the only team on TV. The hero turn of Jameis Winston was not a development I was prepared for, but I love it. I'm, I'm here for it. you want to know if the Browns give a damn, they have a quarterback and a defensive end that do. And... It's not their franchise, quote-unquote, quarterback. It's Jameis Winston trying to revive his career again, this time with the Cleveland Browns. And not only is the quarterback, he is the pastor. He is the pregame pastor. He's back on the Revival Road Tour. And more or less, the message last night was, follow him or perish. You have said you don't become a Brown until you beat the Steelers. What will it take tonight? The horse is prepared for battle, but victory comes from the Lord. So I'm dependent on the Lord. Is that the message to the team? Day by day, one play at a time. That's the message. 
weather conditions tonight. We're expecting winds up to 15 miles per hour in a wintry mix. How will that impact your ability to throw the ball? I am so happy and grateful that the Lord has blessed me to play in some snow, to be in true football weather in Cleveland, Ohio at Huntington Bank Field today to get him the glory. It's a beautiful day. Sure feels like you're playing in the AFC North. <laughs> it, it is. It's magical. Thank you. It's uh, magical. How about that guy? I want to thank the good Lord for the snow from above and for this game. Playing for your, you know, the emblem on your house. I guess we don't have those. So I guess we don't have He's those. got a future in pro wrestling. I, I could see him cutting great that, promos. So in the locker rooms, they do like these anonymous polls or whatever with the players, like a reporter will go around. Years ago, the quarterback that everyone would say in the locker room, Chad, for Sports Illustrated, the quarterback everyone would say they wanted to play with if they weren't playing with their current quarterback was Michael Vick. J Jameis isn't at that level, but I can tell you this. Talking with players that have been in a locker room with him, even as him as a backup, they love this dude. And he brings energy. I mean, that, the whole thing, like, we're the only team on TV. It's like, how many NFL players do you actually think, think about that? On Thursday night in Cleveland, whenever you have two wins on the season. I mean, you got a little juice there, you know? I'd love to see Miles Garrett stand up and say, actually, Jameis, we're not on TV. We're on streaming. We're on Prime Video tonight. So technically not TV, but we are on streaming this Dude. evening. I, I love the hero turn of Jameis Winston. It's cool, I'm yeah. here for it. It's fun. He seems like a very likable dude. I remember when Tampa Bay was on Hard Knocks that one year. Yeah, yeah. I'm, that was the first time I watched, and I'm like, okay, he's a little goofy, but I can see how his teammates like him. That's the first inkling of this side of Jameis Winston I got because it was mostly bad, what you heard at Florida State, with legal issues and accusations and stealing crab legs and all sorts of different things. And getting ready for the draft, that was a lot of the talk also. But it's really crazy how he's remade himself, and he's probably always been this type of guy, especially around teammates. But it's fun to watch the, the resurrection of one Jameis Winston. And I want to give props. To quote scripture, as he <laughs> likes to do. I want to give props to Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is the Michael Jordan of the NFL currently. And here's how. He's taking things personally. And he did it with the most, like, the smallest thing a little slight at him, where last year he wins Defensive Player of the Year, and it's announced at the NFL Honors, and T.J. Watt says, yeah, I, I'm used to this. You know, I, I know how the, you know, something I'm used to. And that He took that it. personally? Oh, he, yeah, he did. I he, took that personally. He made it a, a, a huge storyline throughout the week leading up to Thursday Night Football, and then he shows up and balls out where he ends up with eight pressures, three sacks, one forced fumble, and declares himself defensive player of the year. Here is the, right out of the shoot, post-game at the podium with Miles Garrett. Miles, was that personal for you tonight? Personal? Um, no, you try, to, you try to take things a bit personally, yeah. You know, there's, there's you know, certain aspects of the game uh, that, you know, you, you want to, you know, use as, as motivation, as, uh, you know, what, newspaper material, as they call it, or clipboard, whatever they call it. But, uh, you know, you use that as, as motivation to, to go out there and, and play your very best and just try to make that as, you know, contagious as possible to you know, the uh, men around you. So how satisfying is it to be, not only get the win, but to be 3 nothing over TJ? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't really look at, uh, like, what he did. You know, I was really just focused on you know, going out there and playing the best, very best ball I could. But yeah, you know, I wanted to you know, make it known that I, you know, I'm, I'm the guy. I'm number one. I mean, I love this. It is the true alpha sense. And he's playing on one of the worst teams. One of the very worst teams in the NFL year after year. And he's one of the best players in the National Football League. To the point where he's already looking ahead to December the 8th. This is just the first matchup between these two. December 8th at Pittsburgh. I wonder if if they're going to speak by then. I just you know, want to let everybody know, you know the, the mission. You know, it doesn't change. You know, the, darn the records. Um, no, this is division football. This is as classic of the matchup as it gets. You know, Brown Steelers, Thursday night. You can't ask for a better platform, a better time to showcase um, what you can do as, a, as an individual and as a team.
So, you know, just go out and, uh, you know, recognize the opportunity and, you know, take hold of it. Took full advantage. And I love this, Chad, just to point this out. There's a lot of talk about tanking this time of year. You get the top player in your roster refusing to do that. And he took, like, a slight from the NFL Honors show on social media. And he kept that in his back pocket until he comes out and has a three-sack performance. He, he, told, he had a pregame speech to the locker room where he said, like, Hey, if you're not here to you're not here to play and have some pride. Stay in here. Tanking's not in his DNA. I love that. It's not though. in his vocabulary. He's one of those guys that it, it's never going to not be about the main thing with him, and that is him trying to dominate games to help his team win games, even when his team's bad. I had my NFL hopeless rankings, and I have the Cleveland Browns as the most hopeless franchise right now, and it's not because of Miles Garrett. He's a one the one reason to have hope. Yeah, but. They got locked into a quarterback contract. It's miserable for them for the foreseeable future with Deshaun Watson. That's a dude right there, though. The way the way he thought about that game and the way he took stock of what was said by T.J. Watt, they, yeah. whether it was meant to be disrespectful or not, we've seen they, that with some of the greatest ever. They asked. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, he's putting him on notice. He's just like, hey, uh, I'm number one. I just pro- I just proved it. I'm winning Defensive Player of the Year this year. We we focus so much on offense. I'm locked into this now, and I can't. I haven't heard from T.J. Watt either. Yeah, uh, he said he hasn't. He, I, it's it's a real thing because he hasn't talked with him except for at the pregame coin toss. He said like, "What's up?" That's all we said. Like he's very blunt about it. And at least you know some Browns fans have Miles Garrett to cheer for, like this dude. Yeah, this guy was know. ready last night. What do you think you would show? Would you show up? What? what why would you show up? Think about the drive to the stadium for this guy. Okay, he gets off work on a Thursday. Yep. And he has his mask packed. His shift was over at the mill. His matador mask. He goes, you know what? Tonight, shirtless. I, I just always want to see the aftermath. I'm letting the tits hang out tonight. Of this, yeah. That's what he's saying. But I'm going to cover my face. Snows out, tits out? Yep. As they say? Yep. Slide around in the powder. Up north? See, I mean, This, this I is just... more college. This looks like a college game to me down here. But the the the... the, the you don't see the Matador mask in college football. I love the amount of camo. It's only the NFL. When you get in the cold games, and especially in Green Bay, I noticed that. There's a yeah. lot of guys who have the, the camo on. Look at the – this guy – this is the guy that you get on the what Southwest flight. His nips? Taking uh, – Are those – what is that? I don't know. Uh, Has he decorated himself? Has he adorned himself with something? Whatever the Matadors would do. Is that a – oh, my gosh. I want to see the aftermath when I see people in the cold, shirtless – well, you know, Davey we was never, worried about hypothermia for yeah, those Chiefs fans. We never get the um, the full story with that, yeah. where you see him after, and they're you know really having a hard time. Why? Why is it that it's thirty two degrees in Cleveland, and you have snow? If it's thirty two degrees here, it's rain. It's a slosh. I in think Nashville. it's something with the lake, the lake effect snow. Thirty two degrees. Yeah, it's a it, it's a lake it's a lake effect that happens. Buffalo's I, the same way where they get why a ton I, of snow for that, that reason. Well, that's why I say I want the I want the feels like temperature, uh, because if it feels like twenty four, it's twenty four twenty four degrees. If it's thirty two here, we're gonna have it's gonna be like just a bucket of uh, crushed ice in a you know a water bucket poured on you. It's miserable. We need to get. We still get out of school here though. They wouldn't. Yeah. They're more prepared for it up there with the roads. We need to get the guy, the, the fat guy <laughs> with uh, that went shirtless. I, I want a post post game interview. Why do you them. think? Why do you think the NFL fan wears the matador mask, but the college football fan does not if they go shirtless? I I, I find people that do things like that right. I know to be a very odd this is decision very, to make. Yeah, I know. Uh, this is what are, are we have we zoomed in on this. Do you think that he, like, this is Are his time? Are those band-aids? Is he about to run a marathon? Is it like, this is his time to shine? <laughs> like, I, like Clay? Remember I, Clay? I'm actually training for the half marathon. Remember Clay, you. Clay had his nipples. Uh, they were bleeding? They went, yeah. They were, like, chafed or whatever. Yeah, he had a, he had a nipple problem. Nipple blo- they, they, Yeah, they were bleeding the when he ran marathon. the half marathon. This guy's certainly not doing that. No. I don't think he's in training for anything other than a kegathon. That's yeah. what he's getting ready for. It's your nightmare on Southwest whenever you can buy two seats, but he's, you don't have to if you're taking up both. He's preparing for the local smorgasbord that he's going to just annihilate post game or probably at some point today. He's eating W's. That's a that that is a body though that's prepped for winter. Look at he's ready. That's not in. a summer body. That's a winter body. He's got a few layers of subcutaneous fat 
to yeah. cover him up and this beat like him a, up. Maybe it's a bruise. Or maybe he has the third nipple. Is that a beer that he's drinking too? Looks like beer, right? Is he using a straw? Chad, let everyone know the rule. If a, if a drink arrives at the bar and the straw is present. If you are a man. Yep. Let me rephrase. If you are a heterosexual man, you take the straw out of the drink and you throw it to the side. If you can find a, a wastebasket close by, throw it away. If not, sit it on the bar. Bartender will come pick it up. Right. Because if you are a straight guy and you are a single man and you're at a bar and you lock eyes with a lovely young lady across the bar and the first thing you do is raise that glass to your mouth and slurp through a slaw, through a slaw, <laughs> a slaw, a slaw. You're slurring through the slaw or the straw. It's it's over. The it's slaw. not it's not a good look. My no. older cousin taught me that at a bar in Atlanta when I was living with them with him for a summer while I was in college. And I took that lesson to heart. This and since then, if anyone strong. includes a straw in any drink that I'm ever a part of, you take that straw out and you put it, put it aside. This guy's going to put you in a headlock. Mandible claw. I'm not trying to drink through a straw in front of everyone. I'm, Maybe it's I'm because the, the mask is so constrictive. Maybe. He, but, can't, he can't really drink normally. Now, I will, he like, has to drink through a straw. The fans who like, like uh, Chief Saholic, who's now in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the extremely cold weather games, he's showing up in full mascot uniform, right? Yep. That's warm. Like, okay. Like, kind of smart. Yep. Anybody could be underneath that mask, you know? This, like, get back to I, AEW. I see that, and I think, while Chief Saholic is in prison, I think this is someone who's going to serve time at some point when I see this photo. Yeah. If he hasn't already, he will. <laughs> he will see the inside of a correctional facility. <laughs> That's that's what I think when I see this man. There is a we did show a fan that I guarantee you has just uh, it's the older gentleman the solo photo if we could go to that from earlier. Browns uh, fan. Yeah, Browns fan. Yeah, we cycled through a few of these photos, the shirtless photos, not him. The child. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Your thoughts, Chad? He doesn't drink through a straw. Is he is he carrying? <laughs> oh, look at his waist. Is that a gun, Autumn? Oh, it's Boy, a cell no, phone. The security. It's a clip-on cell phone. But it, it looks like it's made to look like a gun holster <laughs> with a cell phone. Chad's not security the... in Cleveland's real lax at this point. This guy just rolled yeah. in, shirtless, not even concealing. I it. see. I think this guy gun on his hip, like it's damn tombstone. I think this man rolled in with a shirt on, but got in a fight and no longer has a shirt. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Wyatt Earp. Apparently, he's a U.S. Marshal. <laughs> That's why he gets to wear his gun front row for the Browns yeah. game. Feels like temperature. Front row of the upper deck, probably, because there's other heads in front of him. Yeah. He's drinking a Rheingeist. <laughs> it was snowing, but it felt like 72 for this guy. He's headed to the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame after this. He's also a big fan of butt rock. <laughs> Huge Creed guy. Yeah. That's oh, what I look, I, when I see that. Creed Cruz, 100%. He would have killed for Davey's Creed setup at that concert. Davey, your he thoughts. probably has. Uh, no, Creed was someone. actually in attendance for this game. Were last they really? Night. Scott wasn't there, but Tyler. Oh, uh, this guy's I, disappointed. Uh, I sent him a congratulatory text on his Browns winning, and he said, "Here's the reason." He sent me a video, and it was like uh, I saw Mark Tremonti was there, but yeah, they had like three or four guys uh, in did attendance they in Cleveland gear. I didn't. I don't think they did. They are performing in Cleveland tonight. They brought him out like so, the end of the first quarter or something to yeah, wave it, to the crowd. Did, yeah. So, but no, they, they are performing in Cleveland tonight if you're in that area and you want to go Ladies check out and Creed. Creed! So. All right, Preds fans, let's oh, make the scoreboard and, and, and go and higher. while we're at it. That while, dude was while, real excited when Creed was announced. While so, yeah, we're at it, today is the 23-year anniversary of Creed performing at halftime oh. of the Dallas Cowboys Thanksgiving game. And it's become one of the more popular Halloween costumes. Yeah. It's all coming full circle. That's where, the, that's where the internet really pays off. It's, it's We're going to take this funny, scoreboard silly things higher. Like that where the it really smattering goes. of applause yes. a few years ago to now the packed arenas is It's amazing. I would say, Hutton, when you saw Creed perform intermission at a Preds game probably seven, eight years ago. Yeah, yes. And now they're it was selling during out the arenas again? Run. It was 2017. Yeah. They're having these surprise bands show up and play intermission at Bridgestone Arena here in Nashville. Everyone's... Pop, is it going to be Carrie Underwood? Because she was married, uh, is married to Mike Fisher. And it was, was her for one of them. Well, for the, uh, yes, yes. Uh, this was before that. And everyone thought it was going to be Carrie. And it was Creed. Well, Which is the next best thing. It wasn't Creed from The Office. Yeah. Sunday Night Football theme was actually going to be Creed, but he turned it down. So they had to go to Carrie Underwood next yeah. to perform the theme, theme music. 
Netflix says that uh, the NFL did call about the stream issues that uh, the service had during the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson bout. But, and they said, if you F this up, we'll kill you. Yeah, they said, are, 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 how likely is this issue g- going to happen again? Could this happen on Christmas Day where we have scheduled the Chiefs and Steelers and it's the Texans and Ravens, I believe, are also playing Christmas Day. And whatever they told them in response, the NFL, C- uh, the, the report is they are reassured, which my, my, my guess is, they just point to the idea that, well, we got it fixed. You know? Yeah. I also, if I'm Netflix, and hey, that's good. You're doing your due diligence as a league. You know, we want to make sure that our fans oh, can watch the product and all that. But if I'm Netflix, I'm also like, uh, also, second, did the check clear that we no. gave you? Well, here's because why. Because if so, we're working on it. We'll handle an RM, but just to make sure. We paid you millions of dollars for this, so well, th- we're still good on that, right? Well, they, they kind of wrote them in. They backdoored them into the television contract, and the other networks are pissed off yeah. that Netflix had the opportunity to do this without them being able to bid on it. And so they want to make sure that Netflix isn't going to you know, jack up this broadcast. Um, I understand where they're coming from. And yes, the check's clear, I'm sure. I just... it's. I'm not angry about this, but I'm consistent on this. It is fascinating to me that the NFL has completely flipped the dynamic yeah. of when you are a paying customer. I am the media company paying you effing millions for your product. Like you are going to go over and above to serve me if I'm paying you millions. But they flip it to where, no, 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 no. You will do everything we tell you to do. You will. Your broadcasters will not talk about this. I will call you and bitch you out if we have any latency issues on a streaming service for it. We'll go to someone else. It's incredible. I'm going to pay a guy. It on network I'm going to pay a guy to take out my deck here coming up in the next couple of weeks and put in a new one. And I am paying him thousands of dollars to do this. It would be like the guy doing that calling me on the phone and being like, "Hey, I know you're paying me a ton of money, but that gate better be open properly. Did you get that gate open?" It wasn't open the full way last time. The gate to go in the backyard, that damn thing better be open next time I get over there. My response to that would be, I'm going to pay somebody else now to do this construction work for me. But the NFL gets away with it. More they're, power to them. They're the ones that bring the millions more, in. More power to and them. And the ads. And Taylor Swift. That's the other part of it, is they gave them the Chiefs game. Great. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, they, gave the, they took the Chiefs off of one of their network partners. Yeah, they're... And put I mean, them on Netflix. Just an incredibly charitable organization, the NFL. Really, yeah, but really I mean, that, that, that's the concern is ESPN is, uh, they're pissed off at the NFL about Netflix doing it because it's the, the model that they're trying to, you know, do on their own. Well, I think even if uh, Netflix would have come back and be like, you know, we're actually really concerned about it, but we can't well, guarantee it, it's going to happen again. The NFL probably also said, well, let's give it a go either way. No, I think, if that, it's a problem, I think then the we'll threat would have been, we're going we're gonna to simulcast this on a network. Yeah. Since CBS is donating their their production teams, we'll just put it on CBS. Like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm the battle there is fascinating because there's a lot of high ranking people, and they're still the one dominant alpha. Yep, you know, give me all your money, all of it. You're going to spend Take more on this product than you spend on anything else as a media company, and in return for that, I'm going to boss you around. I will tell you exactly what the hell to do at all times, and you will abide by everything I say as we take your money. I said Monday, I, I thought it was a good thing that they had the, the issues that they did. It's a free fight. And you're practically buying. No one, I don't know anybody that bought, uh, paid, or signed up for Netflix based on that. You're already paying your 20 to 25. I don't know. I mean, it's a good thing if they, if they figured out an issue that they found during it and they can yeah, correct I mean, they had, it. Yeah, they had, they had a larger audience for that than what they will on Christmas. Yeah. So. I mean, I think. Optimally, they would have had no issues and had the same audience. But if they cleared up some issue for Christmas, that would have been fine. Well, we know they would have had at least seven million more because Antonio Brown had that on his yeah. live stream. They could have been uh, multi-screening. 